blunt rap boogie. Got a crush on you, but we deal with circumstance. Hey, what's up? I'm your girl Lola Love. You are now tuned in to Blunt Rap TV. I'm here with the beautiful, talented <laughs> Miss uh, Godiva. Godiva the Great, how y'all doing? Make sure y'all follow me on all the social media platforms. Okay, yes. Um, now, Godiva, tell the people out there, some of our fans who don't follow you or don't know you, I'm just getting to know you, so mm -hmm. tell them something um, about you, something that you like your fans to know. Something about me. Um... I'm thick and unapologetic about it. I know, that's why. But I do not only use that as the only tool that I flaunt to get attention. I have talent. I want to be known for that. And all that just come with it. Y'all heard it here first. Talented and beautiful. <laughs> I just heard her rip it in the booth. So. Hey. Yeah. I appreciate you. When was it that you realized that you wanted to do music? Like, this was your passion and this was it. This is what you wanted to do music um i come from a musical family like my grandfather used to have a restaurant back in the day he sang the restaurant my mom's a songwriter um and she's a little unorthodox when i was little i listened to a lot of music i wasn't really allowed to watch a lot of tv uh -huh. and so i did a whole lot of writing okay. and i used to write little short stories and poems and stuff like that and then one day i just learned that i could sing and i could rhyme and i can do all that um and it kind of came naturally and then I started listening. When I was younger, I wasn't allowed to listen to some of the popular hip-hop artists that I like and enjoy today. Uh -huh. My mom was real strict. Okay. And when I started to be exposed to those things, it all kind of just came together. Probably around, like, 18, 19 is when I started taking it seriously. Like, aha, you got a gift. Go do something with it. Uh -huh. That's when I found out. But it's always been music since I was little. I remember songs my mom used to play me when I was little. We grew up listening to musicals. What kind Weird, of Weird, I know. Yeah, <laughs> musicals. musicals. like um, musicals. I don't know y'all familiar. Sound of Music, mm -hmm. South Pacific, Oklahoma, things like that. Things that most African American children aren't exposed to. Right. And I was exposed to those things. And I think it definitely helped me out lyrically and yeah. definitely musically. Yeah, because you sure. can be uh, versatile. Very versatile. And I, yeah. Thanks, Mama. Uh -huh. <laughs> I hear that when you rock, too. I hear that in your style, versatility. Yeah. I like that. That's what's up. It's, it's important to me. For the ladies. I'm yeah. trying to. I know that's why. Trying to. You're doing a good job, baby, yeah. too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some of the female artists that are popular today are like some of the Megan Thee Stallions, the Cardi B's, mm -hmm. the Nicki Minaj's. Um, I feel like, personally, mm -hmm. a lot of them women, they use their raunchiness and their sexiness to... Um, or their stripper past or whatever it is mm -hmm. to like um promote more than being being lyrically talented mm -hmm. you know um versus like rather being in a woman being like damn she delivered some hot shit mm -hmm. no nah, she's just a girl with the fat ass that got that popular song mm -hmm. to me you know that's how i view um a lot of the female rappers today, mm -hmm. they they promote a lot of ass, but they don't say anything really positive or uplifting, or they're not speaking on real topics. They just talking about driving the boats mm -hmm. and and shaking some ass, and I mean, and that's fine, that's cool. We ladies, we like to do that, but I think you know, it's a male dominated game, so I feel like sometimes we got to deliver some lyrically hot shit to let mm -hmm. them know we need to be played with. Mm -hmm. Like the ass shit is cool, mm -hmm. but. You know, I'm nice as shit when I get in this booth. Mm -hmm. I can torch that mic just like yours. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you feel? What's your opinion about um the female rappers that are in the game today? Being it's, a female rapper yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a tough subject, I will say that. It really mostly is. because it stems from pressure. Mm -hmm. Pressure. Mm -hmm. I believe that some female artists, female hip hop artists are forced to put out more popular, more booty shaking music mm -hmm. because that's what attracts everybody. Right. Now in the cut, right. I know they got some hits mm -hmm. that are about other things other than booty, other than titties, other than take me home and do me. Yeah. They got some hits. Yeah. But when they put that stuff out, sometimes no one wants to listen to it. Right. Or it doesn't get the attention that it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So they feel forced in order to get the number one of hits to get the attention of everybody else to put out that booty shaking music. Right. Now one I'll say this, I don't drink like that. But Megan Thee Stallion can drive my boat any day. <laughs> okay? I love her. I uh -huh. love Nikki. I love Cardi. Yeah. Um, it is what it is. They've been naked. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's yeah. a struggle. Like, it I'm is. naturally thick. Naturally big butt. Natural big chest. Uh -huh. And it's a struggle to not 
lead with that. Right, right. But sex sells. It does. I'm no fool, so I want to use it, but I ain't trying to be off there like that. You right. know what I mean? Right. I would honestly say probably some of the respect is gone when you look at artists like that, and not to say just them, but when you look at that, you're like, oh yeah, look at her body, da 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 da. You look at her body before you listen to her lyrics. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be like that. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't feel like they have to put their bodies out there to be heard. Right. Right. But we live in America and we live in this world. You are. And it's a male-dominated world and a male-dominated industry, especially for rap. Mm -hmm. And it's a struggle. And I'm not saying like I'm an expert. I'm definitely diving into it and finding out as I go uh -huh. myself. Right. But it's a struggle. And it's what I'm going to have to find a way to overcome. Like I said, I don't want to be out there over on you like that right. but i do want attention uh -huh. do i have to belittle myself or bring myself down to settle and do that to get the attention the world may never know, yeah. <laughs> may never know. us being artists and us being women a lot of times we have to get dolled up and get cute we gotta get that angle right mm -hmm. we gotta go through all of that you know get our face mm -hmm. all together all of that. So, do you think um, that part of the business and the game helps the marketing? Is it beneficial or can it be a conflict of interest? It definitely depends on who you're trying to market to. Like, there's a whole world of people out there who don't wear makeup, mm -hmm. who don't wear tight fitting clothes, who that's how they live. They, they're not even of, I'll say, of the world. They're right. not of worldly things like makeup and tight clothes and things like that. Wow. However, we as human beings, we shallow as a motherfucker. <laughs> People are attracted to beautiful things. Like every time I go into a room or I'm sitting down talking to a marketing exec or a whoever, mm -hmm. yeah, you got the look, you got the look. It's the reason that they say that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Whatever is marketable to people, mm -hmm. sex, sexy, whatever. So in that market, the market that we have right now of the mumble rappers and the Video big sands mm -hmm. and the makeup, big butt, big chest is going to sell. Yeah. But some people aren't even attracted to that. So it really just depends on who you market to. It's a shame that, and I'm not knocking it because I ain't tried it, don't ever plan to, but I don't really understand it. Mm -hmm. This big plastic surgery wave. Wow. And how everybody named mama think, girl, I got some cash in my pocket. Let me go get some titties. Yeah. Let me go get a booty. Uh -huh. Let me go get this. I don't understand that. And maybe it's because I was born with it. Mm -hmm. But I really don't think that if I wasn't born with it, I'd be running out the door to go try to get that. Right. Because I don't... I had a mother who, luckily for me, I was raised to love myself. I, she didn't teach me to want other things that other women have. She made me appreciate myself. She and right. she's actually a lighter-skinned woman. So for her to... Put, instill that in me mm -hmm. and make me appreciate my dark chocolate skin yes. and the body that I have and not feel crazy about it because the world's going to make you feel crazy, crazy. about it. Mm -hmm. I, I got to love her for it. And it definitely shaped my mind as far as how I think about that. At the same time, to each his own. If you think you need that to be happy, go do that. Go get that. Right. But I think that it's absolutely muddied the waters as far as real authentic women who want to be out here and be seen as real authentic women mm -hmm. and not because I got a big old butt automatically oh that's your fake why mm -hmm. because somebody else got a fake one and I don't look just like that yeah. you forget that the fake butts emulate the real ones right right but with that, that that's another story for another day so as far as my plan for marketing no like I said I'm not trying to be out there be a little naked whole bag out there <laughs> just selling my music I will hope that if I would wore, wear a burlap sack, mm -hmm. then my talent would get me to the Show next level. Itself. And I feel like if you really, really, really have talent, mm -hmm. you're going to get do? to that next level. You don't have to right. do those things that other women have to do. I appreciate that. Right, right. <laughs> what is your answer, guys? <laughs> so being as though that we got to get cute and do our little... Thing. Mm -hmm. I know sometimes we can run into people with bad intentions mm -hmm. and ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. That's what makes the game dirty. That's what makes it real dirty. Mm -hmm. So, being as though we got those type of people in the game, mm -hmm. how do you deal with that when you're just trying to focus and you're just trying to work, you're just trying to get in the studio? Mm -hmm. I know you, you're beautiful, so you. you had to have the engineers trying to work and chill, mm -hmm. or, you know? That's the videographer. Let's shoot something and mm -hmm. and, and chill. Mm -hmm. You know. So how do you deal with that? And how do you how do you separate it? How do you keep that that um 
business side and that personal side separated it when it comes to that? I think the first step is identifying. Um, I'm a vibe person. Right. Sometimes people just going to put the vibe out there just to see what you're going to do with it. Uh-huh. Me, I'm a vibe person. I'm feeling for those. I got my little spotty senses out, and I'm looking for the negative energy. Yeah. And when I say negative energy, I mean someone looking to do something other than my music. Right. Don't be looking to do me. I need you to push that button and do my music. Do okay. that. But with that, some women are getting on with the get on. And that's how they're getting on. Right. I don't know how far they're getting, but that's how they're getting on. You are absolutely me, right. my reputation is more than that. I don't mm-hmm. wanna. I don't care if you Timberland, mm-hmm. if you name some, name some other big producers, and you right. say, yeah, I'm saying I got this beat, and I'm saying this beat for you. Mm-hmm. I'm saying what you trying to do for this beat? That beat gonna stay in the studio. Okay. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, it, it honestly, it does nothing good for me other than have give somebody else another story to say about me. Right. Right. It is what it is. You're not gonna have no stories to say about me. That's I'm gonna stick on my music, and guess what? If you're not effing with me, cause I'm not effing with you. Mm-hmm. I'm out. Right. I'm out. Right. I respect that. Mm-hmm. I respect that because a lot of women in the game will, like you said, use that sexy body, mm-hmm. which you do have, <laughs> to get ahead. Okay. And I'm sure with them it's hard to say no because they're going to dangle in front of you like, a, like it's a piece of candy. Yeah. And if you're passionate like I am about my music and that's really, really, really you what you want to do, do and that's really where you want to go, mm-hmm. and it's only one person between you and that, you, you might, you know what I mean? You might you consider it. Take that chance. But right. you're not. Yeah. You know. And be, that's a whole nother game inside the game. There are people who are preying on would-be artists or potential artists or inspiring yeah. artists because they know that that's their dream and they might just do anything to get it. Mm-hmm. You got the wrong artist. You got the wrong one. <laughs> the wrong one. <laughs> is, I heard you say your music is something that you are very passionate about. Mm-hmm. Now, would you hope to one day make it big, or this is just like what you love doing, mm-hmm. and you'll just do it forever, even if it didn't take you anywhere? I think my goal, my eventual end, is to definitely be an artist. Mm-hmm. More so, I would like to be a songwriter for other artists. There are dope people out there who have the swag, who have the talent, and they don't know how to pick up a pen. Yeah. You're sitting right for those artists. Yeah. And along the way, I'm also making music for myself. So, honestly, if I never popped and just hit it, and yes, Godiva the Great, number one in the world, if I never did that, I think that I would sit comfortable knowing that I could sit in the cut, write for other artists, make them blow up, and then just sit in the cut with my bread, uh-huh. solid and quiet as kept, in the background, right. while they sit in the forefront and go get all of that. And I just sit and collect the money. I'm good with that, too. I know that's I think why. that I just have a gift. I honestly don't know exactly what I want to do with my gift, but I'm learning. Mm-hmm. And as I'm putting out this music and putting out these videos and having these interviews, I'm learning more and more the direction that I want to go in. I know that it's music-based. I'm going to figure it out. But right now, Godiva the Great. We're going to try that out and see what it do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll keep pushing, honey, because I know you I got appreciate it. you. You got it. You definitely got it. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. Well, guys, that will be all you heard in here first. Miss Godiva the Great. Hey. Thank you for keeping it so blunt right with Thank me, Thank you honey. for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey. Where can they find you? Where can they keep up with you? And where can they find your music? I'm Godiva the Great on all social media platforms. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I um, got a new single, Money in My Pocket. It's out on SoundCloud right now. It's sure to be on every other social media platform. Um, very forthcoming. We're actually in the studio trying to get it mixed down right now. So y'all going to hear a different version of it. Um, and that's that. Catch me everywhere. Follow what I'm doing. I'm going to follow you right back. And make sure you tune in to Blunt Rap TV. I got Miss Lola Love. Got step behind the camera. We in there. Thanks, guys. Got money and music, I took a pitfall That's why I'm working extra hard with no days off If they smart, they would listen when the king's district I'm the people's 